Hi students, I hope all of you had good health and have read chapter 1 up to which I have taught you. I hope you have understood the things and uh, if you have any doubt, any queries as I have said you, you can mail me. Okay, so before beginning to the next part that is chapter 2 flower, we will be discussing about the solution of the assignment from fourth part which I have given you. Okay, the first question which I have given you the last day was loss of excess water in the form of vapor from aerial parts of the plant and the answer was transpiration. It is already written on the board. Next is plants that have tendrils. It is sweet pea. Apart from sweet pea, uh, uh, I will be expecting you to collect more Examples also even you can mail me the answers also if you remember. Next is plant in which leaf is modified into spines. And the answer will be cactus. And next question was an insectivorous plant. The answer may be pitcher plant. The answer may be venus fly trap. The answer may be bladderwort. And the next question was. A plant that develops vegetatively through leaves. And the answer is bryophyllum. Next question which I have given you as assignment homework was the function. So function of leaf tendril is to coil around object and support the plant to climb up. Next is spines as seen in cactus. It helps to reduce loss of water because cactus is found in the desert area. So it needs to conserve water. That is why spines helps to reduce loss of water. Next is scale leaves. Now scale leaves is found in onion. It mainly helps us, helps uh, the onion to protect the buds inside it. Next question was, what is the significance of transpiration? The first significance as I have already mentioned you is, it helps the plant to cool down. When the plant forms, uh, when the water forms vapor, it actually takes away the heat energy that is heat from the leaf surface and the plant cools down as I have already explained. And the next thing is it produces transpiration pull. As I mentioned that the suction force that is created above on the leaf, the aerial parts, it helps to absorb water from the soil by means of roots. So this is the significance of transpiration. My next question was why do some plants trap insect? And the answer is some plants trap insect to utilize insect protein by converting it into nitrates as the soil in that area is deficient in nitrate. Remember, each and every organism in this world require protein for growing up, for uh, keeping themselves healthy. But if, uh, if the soil is deficient in that uh, particular uh, nitrogen or nitrate, then plant won't be able to uh, grow healthily. That is why some of the plants require insect to utilize their protein and convert it into nitrate for their utilization. So this is the answer. Now let us move to the next part that is chapter 2. Okay, that is the flower. Now we will be beginning with our first part of chapter 2 that is the flower and uh, over here you can see in my garden, there are a lot of flowers which has blossomed today. So you see, they are brightly colored. These structures are brightly colored and this is known as flower. Now, flower is actually the reproductive uh, unit of a particular plant because after fertilization, the flower will be forming fruit. And uh, this fruit, when after eating, we will be throwing the seed we actually will, will be dispersing the seed or by any means the seeds can be dispersed. The seed on falling on the soil, they will bring forth new plant of the same kind. So let us begin with the different parts of a flower. See, this is a brightly colored part of a flower, which you can see over here. This is actually the petal. 
this is known as the petal okay now this petal actually what it does is firstly it attracts pollinators like insect and all because of the beautifully colored uh, this colored petals the pollinators get attracted and reach to the plant this is one function another is as you can see here is a bud also the what what the petal does during the bud stage during the bud stage it actually protects the flower okay you can see over here also over here also you see actually the petal is actually what it is doing it is protecting the flower in the bud stage and this green portion which you can see this is the sepal this is the sepal so sepal being green it helps in photosynthesis and also protects the flower in the bud stage okay and this this portions which you can see this portions this portion which is attaching the flower to the plant this is known as the stalk this is known as the stalk okay and you can see the node portion also students so this is the node from where new uh, this new stems are coming this is the node from where new stems are coming and the portion between two node is the inter node so next is so two parts we have already read about the flower this is the petal this is this green color portion is the sepal and this is the stalk and within this uh, petal we can see a long pipe like structure which is coming out and you see this pipe which is coming out this is actually the anther this is actually the anther okay this pipe is the filament and this portion is the anther which is producing this yellow yellow color powdery mass i hope you all can see this yellow yellow color powdery mass this is actually the pollen grain okay and at the top you can see at the top you can see this portions this portions this sticky portions this is the stigma okay this pollen grain after after being transferred from this portion it will be falling on this stigma okay it will be falling on this stigma and finally what will happen pollination will be occurring it will fall on the stigma and pollination will be occurring you can see other flowers also over here like you can see this is another example of brightly colored flower okay you can see the buds okay so hope you have understood the different parts of the flower now let us let me explain it one by one so i have drawn the structure of flower on the board also for your better understanding so uh, let us see what are the parts that a flower possess okay what are the part that a flower possess okay first let us see on the top as you can see there is a uh, lobed structure over here this is known as the anther this is known as the anther the anther is uh, attached uh, uh, over here by means of a tube like structure like this this is known as the filament okay now anther and filament together forms the male part they together forms the male part next is you see the tubular knob like structure over here this is known as the stigma this is known as the stigma then the slender pipe like portion which is coming down this is known as the style and around the style you see over here there is a uh, this rounded portion like this well in rounded portion this is known as the ovary ovary and within ovary we are getting this uh, black black dot i have represented it over here by means of rounded structure black black rounded structure this is known as the ovule that means stigma style ovary ovule these are together forming the female part these are together forming the female part that is stigma style ovary ovule now surrounding this male part and female part we can see the brightly colorful part over here the brightly colorful part over here 
which is known as the petal which is known as the petal as i have already shown you this is the brightly colorful attractive part of the flower that mainly attracts the pollinators for pollination and also protect the flower in the bud stage i have already shown you this thing below over here below this portion we can see a basal structure this base portion on which all the floral structures are attached this is known as the thalamus this is known as the thalamus and from the sides a green structure is coming out a green structure is coming out this is known as the sepal now sepal is green in color green in color means it possess the pigment chlorophyll and as we have already learned that uh, this chlorophyll helps in photosynthesis so this sepal also take part in photosynthesis and also it helps to protect the flower in the bud stage now below this portion we can see a tubular uh, slender part is coming down like this by means of which the flower is attached to a stem this is known as the stalk where the plant is attached with the by means of which the flower is attached to the uh, plant okay so this is the structure overall structure of a flower now parts of a flower the flower consists of mainly four parts or four world the first world is known as the sepal the first world is known as the sepal the second world rather rather the second innermost world is known as the petal then third world or third innermost layer is known as the androecium androecium is also known because it is the male part it is the male part of the flower since i have already mentioned that flower is the reproductive unit of a plant reproductive unit means that takes part in formation of new organism now after flower is fertilized we can we will be seeing that it forms the fruit and later forms the seed which on dispersal produces a new kind of plant so androecium uh, being a part of it it is the male part of the flower that takes part in reproduction and the last innermost part of the flower it is known as the gynoecium gynoecium means the female part gynoecium means the female part so now we will be discussing about the four parts in details that how it looks like or what is its function we will be learning in details about this the first part that is the outermost part of a flower it is known as the sepal as you can see i have already drawn a diagram of sepal also so it is the outermost world made up of green leaf like structure it is made up of green leaf like structure and i as already i have told that being green it contains chlorophyll so it takes part in photosynthesis and also it protects the flower in the bud stage actually it protects the androecium and gynoecium that is the innermost important part of flower in the bud stage this is the first world that is the sepal next world of flower is the petal it is also known as the corolla now it is the innermost second world of flower that is brightly colored you can see also i have shown a dissected part of the diagram on the board now being colorful as we are also very much attracted towards color similarly pollinators like butterfly insects uh, like ant then uh, bee all these insects are very much attracted towards this brightly colored petals and uh, they come to flower and help in pollination so the function of petal is to attract pollinators for pollination and also along with the uh, calyx or the sepal it protect the flower in the bud stage as i have already shown you one of the 
this bud stage protection in my garden i have already shown you how they are actually protecting the innermost part that is the androecium and gynoecium in the bud stage now the next world this is androecium that is the next part of the flower now androecium is uh, actually the male uh, part of the flower it is also known as the stamen now see its feature is it is a third whorl containing anther and filament now what is anther anther i have already drawn the diagram over here this uh, tubular structure which is bilobed bilobed means two parts are there this is known as the anther and it also consists of the filament filament means this long slender tube like structure which is attaching this uh, anther this is known as the filament i have already drawn on the board now the main function of androecium is to produce a yellow powdery material called pollen grain which contains the male gamete now this yellow powdery mass i have already shown you uh, while i was showing you the flower in my garden now this pollen grain anther on maturation produces this pollen grain which is yellow uh, color yellowish in color i don't have a yellow color pen so i am uh, giving a black dot over here to make you explain now this structure i am magnifying the diagram and showing you how it looks under the microscope as i have already told you microscope is an instrument used to see this pollen grains or any kind of tiny particle in a magnified form you see it consists of this spiky spiky structure over here and inside this rounded structure there is a nucleus now this nucleus is known as the male gamete so don't get confused i said that pollen grain containing male gamete that means anther produces pollen grain and this pollen grain contains this nucleus which is known as the male gamete now this is the function of androecium that is to produce the pollen grain which in turn consists of the male gamete the last and innermost structure or whorl of a flower is the gynoecium now gynoecium is also known as the female part of the flower the female part of the flower it is also known as the carpel or the pistil as we can see as we can see as we can see it consists of the gynoecium gynoecium consists of you can see a tubular structure over here tubular knob like structure over here this tubular knob like structure is known as the stigma okay next the pipe like structure which is connecting the stigma to this swollen portion this is known as the style this swollen portion which is present over here this is the ovary and within the ovary we can see rounded structure like this this is known as the ovule that means gynoecium is the fourth innermost whorl of flower which consists of stigma style ovary now let us discuss one by one about the function of the different parts like stigma stigma helps the plant or the flower to receive the pollen that means whenever the pollen comes it always falls on the stigma it always falls on the stigma as i have already i am drawing the picture it is falling on the stigma that means stigma's main function is to receive pollen now style what style will do actually it will transfer the male gamete into the ovary that means the male gamete which is present inside the pollen it will come down it will come down to the ovary and enter the ovule like this i have marked it in a black ink as you can see it will transfer the male gamete into the ovary and next we have the swollen basal portion this is known as the ovary and ovary consists of ovule the rounded structure and within the rounded structure again there are nucleus present within this rounded structure this nucleus which is present inside this ovule this is known as the 
female gamete so please students don't get confused okay ovule does not means the female gamete actually ovule consists of the female gamete that is the nucleus similarly pollen grain is not the male gamete actually pollen grain containing that nucleus the nucleus is known as the male gamete i hope you have understood up to this about the different parts of a flower and there are mainly four parts that is sepal petal androecium and gynoecium now let us discuss about the classification of flower classification of flower means classification based on the four floral structures we have read the four floral structures that we have read like in case of complete flower if a flower consists of all the four i repeat if a flower consists of all the four whorls that is sepal petal androecium gynoecium then that flower is known as complete flower like the ones you have seen in my garden what it consist of it consist of all the floral whorl that is sepal petal androecium gynoecium that flower is known as complete flower now incomplete flower are those which lack one of the four whorl means suppose a flower is not having sepal or a flower is not having petal or a flower is lacking with androecium or the flower don't consist of gynoecium if out of four whorl if any one of the whorl is missing then the flower will be known as incomplete flower similarly another kind of flower we get in nature that is bisexual or hermaphrodite flower we can see uh, uh, i hope you all can see it's written on the board that flower having both androecium and gynoecium are known as bisexual or hermaphrodite flower please don't get confused with complete flower i said in complete flower all the four whorls are present but in bisexual flower both androecium and gynoecium has to be present that means suppose if a flower don't have a sepal but have androecium and gynoecium then the flower will be incomplete one but at the same time the flower will be bisexual also similarly if a flower possess sepal petal androecium gynoecium all together then the flower will be known as complete flower also as well as bisexual flower also so please don't miss the things i have already marked in red so these are the keywords which you need to write in your exam don't forget it if you miss and get confused then you will be not given any marks so be aware and please concentrate next is unisexual unisexual flower is which one flower lacking either androecium or gynoecium that means a flower which is lacking either androecium and gynoecium they are known as unisexual flower and also at the same time incomplete flower also okay now let us move on to the next part but before that please have a look at the board and one time please uh, memorize it that is complete flower having all the four whorl incomplete flower which is lacking one of the four whorl bisexual containing both androecium and gynoecium and unisexual flower is one which lacks either androecium or gynoecium our next topic is pollination pollination means what pollination means transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma that means if this is the anther and the anther if burst it secretes and produces it spreads this pollen grain over here this dotted structure is the pollen grain as you can see this pollen grain on being released from the anther it will 
come and land on the stigma. This process of transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of a flower is known as pollen is known as pollination. This is known as pollination. The transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of a flower is known as pollination. Now, pollination are mainly of two types. One is self-pollination, another is cross-pollination. Now, we will be discussing about these two types of pollination. What is self-pollination and what is cross-pollination? The first, the first one is the self-pollination. In self-pollination, the transfer of pollen grain, the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma occurs, uh, the transfer of pollen uh, from the anther to the stigma occurs from the same or different flower but of the same plant. Okay. What happens? Let us see. If the pollen is transferred from the same flower to the stigma of same flower, then this is known as self-pollination. And if the pollen is transferred from one flower to another flower, but within the same plant, then also this is known as self-pollination. Let me explain once more. If the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of this same flower or between different flower that is from this flower to this flower but this exchange occurs within the same plant see I have already written also the same plant then this is known as self-pollination and since this is occurring within same plant that is why no pollinating agents are required in this case no pollinating agents are required in this case. Next is cross-pollination. In cross-pollination, pollen is transferred from one flower to another. But you see this is occurring between two plant. The last one was occurring between the same plant. But in this case, the transfer of pollen grain will occur from one flower to another but between two different flowers. But they have to be of same kind. That means pollen grains are transferred from one flower to another of different plant but of same kind. Means if the pollen of mango tree is uh, there then it has to fall on the stigma of the mango plant of different kind. But if the mango pollen falls on some other kind of fruit like apple, then this pollination will not occur. That means they have to be of same kind. From one mango tree, it has to go to another mango tree. Okay, it cannot go from one mango tree to another apple tree then pollination will not be occurring. Now in order, in order to uh, uh, this thing do this cross pollination we require rather the plant require pollinating agents and I have already drawn the diagram also of a pollinating agent you can see it is a insect but apart from insect there are more pollinating agents also I am showing you one by one now the pollinating agents, mainly the pollinating agents uh, may be many but uh, we have to read only about three pollinating agents. It is one is insect, another is wind, another is water. Now in case of insect, when an insect comes to visit a flower for obtaining nectar or pollen grains as a food, the pollen grain sticks on the insect body parts. And when it moves from one flower to another, the pollen grain is transferred by means of this insect. That means whenever it arrives to one flower for obtaining food, like in uh, the form of nectar, the pollen grain attaches to their body. Next, when it moves to the next flower, the pollen grain is transferred to the next flower. But in this case, flower has to be very brightly colored for attracting insect and it must produce nectar like in case of dahlia. As you can see is in case of dahlia. 
in case of wind pollination what happens a gush of wind comes and blows away the light dry pollen of the flower and transfer it to another flower and this way cross pollination occurs in this case pollen has to be light and dry otherwise it won't be able to blown away and next one is this example of this wind pollinated flower is maize and the last one is the water now in case of water what happens when the female flower uh, what happens in case of the female flower it remains attached in their position but male flowers on maturation get detached and it floats on water means it comes to the female flower by floating in the water and after it comes to the female flower it transfer the pollen grain to the female flower so in this case pollen should be such that it can float on water otherwise if it sinks in water it will not be able to pollinate the flower for example valisneria so once more i am telling pollinating agent there are of three types insect pollination insect can pollinate the flower wind can also and water can also so have a look at the board so that you can understand okay i hope you have understood okay that means in insect pollination the pollen grain stick on the body of uh, the insect and when it visits the next flower the pollen grains are transferred in case of wind pollination with each gush of wind it blows away the light dry pollen from the male flowers or from any flower and it transfer it to the next flower on its stigma and this way pollination occurs by wind and in case of water the male flower comes floating in water to the female flower so that it can transfer the pollen grains to the stigma of the female flower to ensure pollination okay so up to this for from chapter 2 in next class we will be reading about the next part that is fertilization thank you students